Have you ever wondered what happened to all the cheap film SLRs? Well, look no further. You found them. Hello everybody, thanks for checking in and today I'm going to show you some really cheap film SLRs that seem to have escaped the massive price rises that we've seen in all things film very recently. They were made in their millions, there are loads and loads of them around. They're very very freely available and they won't cost you much cash either but first let me ask you a question and that question is does the process of making an image matter as much as the image itself or put another way does the camera matter as much as the image itself I don't know I'm not sure it does let me show you my favorite film camera now this is my Olympus OM2 and if you're a regular viewer to this channel you will no doubt have seen this camera before it's featured uh, occasionally it's a very very beautiful thing it's all made of metal it's got little flashes of chrome on the controls it's got all these mechanical looking controls and it's a very beautiful thing with the classic camera the classic SLR look it's a very very capable camera uh, and you can buy one of these with a lens for between 150 and 200 pounds thereabouts that sort of price will get you one of these cameras and you know that money will buy you a really useful worthwhile capable camera a very old camera for sure but a very very capable one indeed assuming everything is working well now for about a tenth of that price or maybe a little more you could buy something like this this is the Canon EOS yeah EOS 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 3000 N now I think these were known in the USA as the Rebel uh, series all the manufacturers of the time made something like that this is the Nikon version it's the Nikon what is this one Nikon F60 so you can see that they're very similar in design they've both got the LCD panel on top they've both got a PASM wheel on the left there or on on uh, screen right rather so they're very similar they've both got sort of roundy edges and curves where the earlier camera had very straight edges you can see that's all straight edges where I don't think there is a single actual straight edge on the Canon or, or indeed on the Nikon they're all round I can't see a single straight edge on that camera anywhere perhaps maybe at the back here that's necessitated by engineering but it's a very stylized thing <coughs> and the Nikon equivalent is similar both of these cameras will cost you around about 20 five pounds to buy I just paid 25 pounds for this Nikon it didn't come with a lens but I've popped on my uh, what have I got on here uh, Sigma MC zoom that's an autofocus lens I bought that lens for about 15 pounds so all in all this kit cost me the Nikon kit cost me about 40 pounds the Canon kit I did buy a little earlier I bought it about a year ago or thereabouts this camera with a lens cost me uh, I think it was 25 pounds with the lens what kind of a lens have I got it's a 28 to 90 f4 to f5.6 kit zoom so it'll cover all the focal lengths that I could need in day-to-day -day photography and it's a very versatile lens it's a bit slow but you know it's a kit zoom so one must expect that kind of 
limitation in a cheap kit zoom but it's a good lens and importantly this camera will mount any Nikon lens you want to uh, sorry any Canon EF lens you want to mount on it and the Nikon will mount I think I'm right in saying correct me if I'm wrong because I'm not an expert on Nikon gear but I think the Nikon will mount any Nikon lens from around the late 50s it'll certainly mount all the recent ones from the past 20 years or so um, possibly not the digital ones what am I talking about that was a silly thing to say what I meant was the last 20 years of film lens production so this Nikon camera will mount um, many many of the Nikon lenses as I say I think going up to around about 1959 or thereabouts so both these cameras are really versatile machines um, they're both very capable machines both of them have auto exposure and manual exposure modes and various other modes as well um, and they are of course auto focus these are both both auto focus cameras now the question that's on my mind is these cameras the ones I've just showed you this Canon and the Nikon they are state-of-the-art film cameras this is final state-of-the-art kit it didn't get any better than this this was as good as it got okay these are consumer cameras whereas the OM2 was not a consumer it was kind of a prosumer not sure if it was ever a totally sort of full-on pro camera but they were used by pros so it's a, it's a sort of a level up um, compared to this one um, this is definitely a consumer camera and so is the Nikon version I showed you but the question really is why are the earlier cameras popular and these ones are not these are easier to use they will make you at least as good an image depending on what lens you mount why are not people why are people not rushing out to buy these in droves whereas they are the earlier cameras and the earlier cameras have become so popular you know the price is going up and up and up and shows no real sign of stopping well as far as I can see it's a simple question of fashion these cameras are simply just not fashionable and I think the reason they're not fashionable is because they look like DSLRs you really could mistake this camera for a digital camera certainly if you don't look at the back there's no screen on the back uh, on a film camera and you could also mistake this camera for a, a, a DSLR they are very very similar in style to DSLRs and I think what happened was the film camera's final evolution was this shape and this functionality and when DSLRs appeared the styling was carried over to them because simply because people were familiar with it I think if uh, DSLRs had appeared at a time when this camera was on the market or, or, or this style of camera was on the market then they probably would have adopted that same control system but that wasn't the case uh, DSLRs appeared when these kinds of camera uh, film camera were on the market and it's simply the um, styling has been carried over and that's all it is but what's not to like about this styling I really don't know I think I think what sets it apart what sets this kind of styling apart from the earlier styling is firstly there aren't any straight edges uh, everything is curved I don't know if you can see a, a straight edge on that camera but apart from the bottom which is flat necessarily by function and apart from the uh, back of the door here there's a straight line and there's a straight line I can't see any other straight lines on this camera and it's very much a function 
of its design. So we've got this very, very designed thing with the grip here and the round surfaces everywhere. And it does look like a DSLR. And I think that's one of the reasons it's just not popular. These cameras are also far easier to use. Uh, that is to say, you don't need to be so aware of your exposure, for example. You don't need to be worrying about finding your exact focus point. The camera will do that for you. You don't need to worry about loading the film. The camera will do that for you. This is a camera, these cameras, 90s consumer cameras, literally do everything for you and that's far easier that makes them far easier to use now for my money that's an argument to be using them why would you want to use something that's difficult why would you want to put difficulties in your own way well the reason is of course that people like to get involved with the uh, photography people like to get under the skin of photography and that's what the earlier cameras do they allow you to get under the skin of photography they allow you to get that little bit nearer to your image making process with this camera a late 90s camera we're one step removed from the image making process. Everything's automatic. Everything's taken over for you. Even the film speed will be read in a DX code of the film can. So there's a layer of automation in between you and the actual photograph, in between the photographer and the photograph. And I think that is one of the reasons why these cameras are not as popular they're just that little bit removed they remove the photographer just that one step from the process of photography and measuring the light and appreciating the distance and understanding the depth of field these are just that bit removed and that process of removal eventually ended with the DSLR uh, and, the, the, and, and, and mirrorless cameras tried to gain this back a little bit, I think. But with the DSLR and with digital cameras in general, what you've got is a simulation of something like this. A simulation of a film camera um, that measures the light, that focuses. And that process of removal began with these cameras these late 90s uh, SLRs so when you get to the DSLR and to uh, and I think to a lesser extent the mirrorless camera you're one step removed you're entirely removed and you've got a simulation of that mechanical picture taking tool now those are just my thoughts I love using these cameras. I really like these late 90s film cameras. They are state of the art. And you can't get better than that. This is as good as the technology got. Why would you pay 150, 200 pounds for an OM2 when this camera will do the job far easier, far cheaper, you can mount a fantastic selection of lenses, far more than the Olympus range, uh, and also the Canon EF. Um, that range of lenses is massive, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, but I think maybe you can even mount some of the full-frame digital lenses on these. Do correct me if I'm wrong, but that would be an interesting experiment. So I really like these cameras. I think they are absolutely fantastic i grew up when photography was difficult i grew up in a photographic age where you had to know exactly what you were doing you had to know how to measure light what kind of light a certain scene might need um, how to get your focus exact what kind of aperture you're going to need what kind of shutter speed you're going to need is there any requirement to freeze motion or to give a little blur how how about the shadows you know you had to do that i learned photography on a fed four 
uh, rangefinder and that was a lovely old camera which I've still got but it was all manual and you really had to know what you were doing with these you don't they're automatic but here's the thing you can turn off that auto function look both of these cameras you can turn them to manual you can do that on the Canon as well you can turn that one to manual I never do because got to be honest I always shoot in aperture priority unless I particularly need to shoot manual but because I grew up in that age where film cameras were difficult to use and you really had to think about it I'm all for a bit of automation I love a bit of automation and that's a great delight to me um, if you've grown up in an age of automation maybe you're looking for the manual experience which is that bit more difficult okay the om2 is not a manual camera it's got auto exposure but you know a lot of these old cameras are manual and even with the auto exposure you still have to focus yourself so if you're coming from an age where everything's automated i could un i can understand wanting to use uh, a mechanical camera and wanting that classic uh, slr look but my advice is forget about fashion forget about what's fashionable forget about worrying too much about whether you want an all mechanical camera um, whether you want the classic slr look if you want to shoot film this and cameras like it 90s consumer slrs are the cheapest way to do it and if you want to shoot in manual if you want to use your light meter if you want to focus manually uh, and to expose manually you can do that with both of the, where's the other one you can do that with both these cameras and all the 90s uh, consumer cameras as far as I'm aware you can do that with two but you can certainly do it with this one the EOS 3000 and the Nikon F60 um, I've got in here in the Canon camera I've got a lovely roll of the latest Fujifilm 200 now it's not called C200 anymore it's just called 200 so when I get this developed I'm going to do uh, an episode just on film and we'll see whether it's the same as that lovely Fujifilm I used to use so we'll see what happens there I've not shot the Nikon yet I will be shooting it soon for an episode I'll be doing an episode soon on the Nikon I've already reviewed the Canon maybe a couple of years ago um, but maybe I'll do a comparison uh, test as well however I really like those late 90s consumer cameras I find them fantastic to use and I think you should try them too they're available from about 25 30 pounds with a lens if you're lucky if not this Nikon kit as an example this is an f60 uh, I paid 20 pounds for the camera and 25 pounds for the lens so I'm up and running for 45 pounds and that's a real cheap film kit and a really capable film kit as well so I guess that's about it from me for now we've got some really exciting stuff coming up uh, I've got a Rolecord TLR camera coming in which is fantastic because I've just been sent uh, several rolls of 120 film I've got a Leica Elmar f3.5 50mm uncoated pre-war lens coming in so it'll be really interesting to look at that and see how it compares to the Russian collapsibles we've got various other lenses to look at we've got several cameras to look at and uh, hopefully we've got some interesting stuff coming up but as ever if there's anything you'd particularly like me to make or if you've got any ideas for shows you'd like me to do then please do let me know in the comments box below thank you very much for watching this episode please do all the usual youtube -y 
things that is like subscribe and ring that bell please many many thanks to subscribers thank you for your subscriptions it's absolutely fantastic i do appreciate all the support and many many thanks also go to patrons without whom this show wouldn't be possible in the form uh, that it's made in it wouldn't be possible for it to do what it does so many thanks to you patrons i'll be back soon with some more xenography so i do hope if you're not too busy you can join me then until then that's it from me cheerio everybody tally ho see you next time